cyber attack that occurred recently and the bigger implications behind all of this. Now I'm here and it says WannaCry infecting more than 230,000 computers in 99 countries and it was actually even more than that. But it says in reports WannaCry is a ransomware program also known as WannaCrypt or WannaCryptor 2.0, Wanna Decryptor and other similar. Targeting systems using Microsoft Windows, it has launched a massive cyber attack, infecting more than 230,000 computers in 99 countries. And note how this attack began right before the weekend. It seems like they always begin right before the weekend. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. But what it did was that it infected computers worldwide through email attachments. After infecting one computer, it then infected all others in a local area network or LAN. The ransomware encrypts the infected computer's hard disk drive then attempts to gain access so it can further spread on random computers connected to the internet via TCP port 445. As a ransomware, WannaCry demands its victims ransom payments in bitcoins ranging from $300 to $600. And just this past weekend alone, WannaCry has infected systems from various companies as well as government entities, and these are some of the companies that it's affected. We're going to be talking more about this in just a second to come, but it even includes FedEx, the National Health Service, or the NHS hospitals in the UK, among many more. And we'll also be looking at a more detailed list later on in the video to come. And here's a map of all the countries that were affected. Now here is a map listing the affected countries when it came to this cyber attack. The ones listed in red were the ones affected. As you can see, it's countries including America, Canada, and Mexico, all the way down to Brazil and different places in South America, including Australia, places in Asia such as India and even China. Russia too was affected even though we know exactly what's really going on here. It also extended into Europe and places like Germany, Denmark, the UK, France, Spain, Portugal, and even places in Africa such as Egypt and Tunisia, Morocco and Kenya, Tanzania. Mozambique, Angola, South Africa, and also in the Middle Eastern regions such as Saudi Arabia and even Jordan too. Now, according to the Boston Globe, they say that it was close to 150 countries that was affected by this. But what they also want us to believe is that as elusive so-called global network of security experts fought a rearguard battle against ransomware hackers, because that's what they're doing. Officials and experts urged organizations and companies to update operating systems immediately to ensure they aren't vulnerable to a second, more powerful version of the software or to future versions that cannot be stopped. And what they really want us to believe is that some random cyber attack was started by hackers and a, oh my goodness, they're coming to fix the problem, problem, reaction, solution. It's the same darn agenda over and over and over again, especially when it comes to an agenda so worldwide and massive like this. We know exactly who's really behind it. Now, this is interesting because this report, along with many others, actually tells us where WannaCry could, in fact, stem from. Because it says, WannaCry is believed to have been developed using Eternal Blue Exploit, initially created by who? None other than the NSA, no such agency, to attack computers using Microsoft Windows. Eternal Blue was first released to public by a hacker group that goes with the name The Shadow Brokers back last month along with other tools. It's also no surprise either whatsoever from a Forbes article that's titled an NSA cyber weapon might be behind a massive ransomware outbreak. And it's like now the elite are no longer hiding it whatsoever. They're literally telling you right in front of you who's really behind all of this. Because it says here it's been a matter of weeks since a shady hacker crew called Shadow Brokers dumped a load of tools that believe to belong to the NSA or the National Security Agency, a.k.a. no such agency, the same agency that spies on all of us each and every single moment of our lives. It now appears one leaked NSA tool 
an exploit of Microsoft Windows called Eternal Blue is being used as one method for rapidly spreading a ransomware variant called WannaCry across the world. And if you continue scrolling down, you'll see Eternal Blue Danger. The use of the NSA Eternal Blue exploit was confirmed by an independent malware researcher known as Caffeine, and they also tweeted about it on their actual Twitter page. Now, according to them, Caffeine told Forbes that it was unsure if the exploit was being used as the ransomware's primary method of infection, but it was certain that it was used in some capacity. Separately, UK-based researchers researcher Kevin Beaumont tweeted that WannaCry was using the NSA attack, which exploited a now-patched Microsoft Windows vulnerability, also known as MS-17-010. And who's really behind the NSA, the no such agency? We know exactly who is because what happens when you type in Illuminati.com backwards into your screen, and you can try this too, and I know I've done this before, but if you type it in backwards in your screen and you press enter, as I've just done here, this is what you get, the NSA, the National Security Agency. They're literally telling you exactly who they are, what they're doing, and what's really about to take place because it's the same Zionist Illuminati bankers that are trying to overtake the entire world and they're practicing and staging for their new world order with the NSA helping them when it comes to spying not only that but practicing and doing these different malware drills and also cyber hacking indeed and it's no surprise or coincidence whatsoever how this happened nearly a month after the power outages that occurred in both San Francisco and New York City, so on both coastlines, and we're going to be talking more about that, and that just so happened to occur on a weekend too, no surprise or coincidence there. Just like it's no surprise how in three hours alone, this supposed cyber attack struck how many nations, who else can be behind this, and what is it really leading up to? But it's just interesting when you play the actual animated timeline here, and this comes from a post from the New York Times, this actually shows you that within two hours alone, close to a hundred nations, if not more than that, were affected all afternoon, all the way up until about 6 p.m. Eastern Standard time as you can see on this diagram right here. Now, the BBC also lets you know who was affected by this attack. Some reports say Russia has seen more infections than any other country. That's what they want us to believe. But according to their interior ministry, 1,000 of their computers have been infected, but the virus was swiftly dealt with and no sensitive data was compromised. In Germany, the federal railway operators said that electronic boards had been disrupted. And according to France, the car maker Renault was forced to stop production at a number of sites. Other targets include Spanish firms, Portugal Telecom, which is a university computer lab in Italy, and a local authority in Sweden, the U.S. delivery company FedEx, and schools in China, and also hospitals in Indonesia, South Korea, and even the U.K. Just like it's no coincidence that that same exact moment that this happened, finance ministers from the G7 group of leading industrial countries had been meeting to discuss the threat of cyber attacks. Also, it's no surprise how just a few days later, your president, Mr. Trump, even passed an executive order on cyber attacks the same exact time of the final day of Operation Gotham Shield that ended this past week. Wow, no surprise or coincidence whatsoever. Here are some more organizations that were affected. Now, this just gives a brief list of them from Wikipedia. As you can see, it affected countries like Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, France, Germany, Hungary, and the list goes on from there. Now, you can take a look at this and pause it on your own time if you would like, but as you can see, the agenda goes much deeper than this, and notice how many of your mainstream articles are talking about, well, this could happen again, it's not over, is all of this predictive programming and subliminal programming from your elite to let you know that something like this could happen again, that this was, in fact, a test? Of course it is, because what does The Guardian say? 
this is not over. I'm telling you, this is only the beginning. What are they really subliminally trying to tell us? Now, like I said, this also should not surprise us or come to as any type of coincidence whatsoever, because just a few weeks ago, we even saw the power outages that occurred in America, specifically in New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. It occurred on two different coastlines around the same time, right before the weekend. Does X-Files Season 10 Episode 1 sound familiar now? It should. Some alarm bells should be ringing. And as we've already gone over, this just so happened to occur right after Gotham Shield 2017, which had to do with the nuclear detonation drill that took place in both New York and New Jersey. And I've covered that and done extensive video coverage on that if you would like to take a look at it. But as you can see, the very last day of that was only a few days ago. And then the very next day is when this event took place and when the cyber attacks happened. Huh? What a surprise. Just like around the same time of all of this happening, it's exactly a hundred days from the great American eclipse that's supposed to be occurring on 821, 2017, not to mention how it's 133 days or 19 weeks from the 923, 2017 sign. And these are major signs indeed, signs to look out for, signs of the time. Do you see exactly what they're getting ready for? Prayerfully, you see it with both your eyes open 